Welcome to You Can Do It. I'm your host, Chris, and in this video, we're going to be doing a dry rot repair kit in the door jam. We're going to be using this composite door jam repair kit by Boss Jams. So stay tuned. I'm going to show you how you can do it. So let's go ahead and open up the box and inspect our jam repair kit here. So it's a vinyl. You got two pieces of vinyl here. And they've been specially cut. All the cuts have been made for the weather stripping right here. And then for the uh, your threshold that goes in, it's got the angled cut on it, as you can see that right there. And then obviously this little piece here is going to help support the whole jam kit. So this goes up, this piece as it extends, we'll be cutting that precisely on the old jam. So I've never installed one of these before, um, but I just thought, well, let's give it a shot because this is vinyl, this won't rot. The rest of the jam is in great condition. It's just the lower three inches of the jam is rotten. So if the dry rod on your jam ex extends up into this area here, eight to nine inches, then you just need to replace the whole thing. So. Um, so we're going to go ahead and give it a shot. The tools that you're going to need is an oscillating cutter here. We're using a fine tool. Um, this makes a great cut, nice and precise. You can control the speed on the side here. So we're going to be using that to make our cuts. You'll need a pry bar if you need to take the molding off around the door. Uh, a nice sharp knife. This is kind of a putty knife. Um, you'll also need a tool, uh, a box cutter, uh, just so you can score the uh, silicone around the door so you don't rip all the paint around the door. And then obviously you're gonna need this. This is what they recommend. It's JB Weld. And that's what we're gonna use to fill in the holes when we go to screw the door jam. Uh, repair kit um, and this is white I got it in white got this from Home Depot it's, it's JB weld it's a marine weld and it adheres to PVC um, and then I also bought this not sure if I'd use this but this actually would work as well so it works with PVC plastic um, and then we'll need a sharp chisel um, and then we got a square to make our, our straight lines for the cuts. And so with all that being said, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, here's our door jam. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and measure from the bottom of the jam, as close to the subfloor as you can get all the way to the bottom. If you, you might have to pull the carpet back or your wood floor, but we're gonna measure up from the bottom of the jam, six and three quarters, and you're gonna put a line right there and then you're going to take your square line it up with your line and draw a line all the way across the jam so from here to here this is our molding we'll be pulling this off here in just a minute but before i put a, a line a mark right here i'm going to follow this all the way through but before i do that i'm going to go ahead and pull the weather stripping out of the kerf here i'm going to remove the weather stripping on both sides because I don't want to cut through that. I want to try to save that if I can. So if you just put a putty knife in there, you can kind of work it out. And once you get, get it out a little ways here, you can just pull this all the way out. So we'll just set that off to the side. Now, what we have here is, that's a an alarm sensor for the door. You may not have that. If you do, just, we're gonna pop that out. It's a magnet. We're gonna reinstall that. Once we get the new jam piece in, set that off to the side there. We'll go ahead and bring our line all the way across. So we'll be cutting 
this out with the fine tool on both sides. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and remove the outer molding on the door here. Before I do that, I'm gonna take my knife and I'm gonna just score the caulking between the jam and the molding so I don't destroy the wood and the seal. It'll make it easier for me to get it off as well. So just go ahead and go. If you have to take that off, you can. The directions say you can just cut in here without removing that, but I'm taking this off because it's dry rotted at the bottom. I'm gonna be replacing that. So I'm gonna go ahead and score all the way around the door. So I'm gonna take my putty knife here. Since this is dry rot and soft, I'm gonna stick that in there. And then I'll put my, my pry bar in here to get some leverage and just start prying it out. And just work it out. There we go. Should come off fairly easy unless they use screws, of course. Okay, so we got the molding, the outside molding. It's gone now. We've removed both sides. I'm only showing you one side. I'll flip over to the other side. Uh, they're both going to be the same. So, um, so now I've got my oscillating cutting tool. Um, you can use a hacksaw or a handsaw if you didn't want to go out and buy one of these. They're pretty expensive, but this thing works amazing, as you're going to see right here. So we're going to go ahead and cut from here over, but we don't want to cut into our baseboard here and our trim around the inside of the door. So we want to be real careful once we get to this point over here. So you want to make sure you cut all the way through the jam all the way through and uh, if you've got wires back in there for your security you just want to make sure you don't hit any of those or tuck them in um, so now that we've got this cut we're going to make this vertical cut here um, you should be able to just score that with your knife to break through any caulking and it should just pull out well, it may not be that easy. You might have a screw, or I'm sorry, a, a finish nail going in here into the jam, which I'm assuming, yeah, it seems like we got one right there. So we might have to pry that off. So we're gonna go ahead and do the other side now. Okay, so we got our line here. It follows all the way through and stops right here at our molding. Um, this is the hinge side. So as you can see, we got the hinge. We're gonna go ahead and cut all the way through like we did on the other side. So let's go ahead and proceed with that. Go ahead and score this side. So let's go ahead and see if we can pull this out now. There we go. There's that side. You will, you will probably need some a can of foam to foam the inside of the jam once we get that part out. Yeah. Oh, that's nice and
So I'm gonna go ahead and clean up the mess and we'll proceed to the next step. All right, so we got that out of the way here. We're gonna go ahead, there's a couple of long nails here. Instead of backing them out and messing up the baseboard in the front, we're gonna go ahead and just cut these, these nails off flush. I got a pair of Nipex side cutters here. They're kind of angled. So I'm just gonna kind of get in there and cut them flush. Just check for any other nails that may be sticking out on both sides. And so now we're gonna take our jam, our jam repair piece here, and the, the left side, we're gonna kind of line it up over here. And then we're going to trace this upper section right here because we're gonna notch, we're gonna notch that out. So you can kind of see here the line running across the upper portion here and then it kind of steps in about a half inch and drops down. We're not going to cut all the way through here. So if you can envision this piece here, it's going to be scribed right into our jam that you can see. So it's going to, we're going to recess that in there and it's going to go in the thickness of this right here. So we're going to take the fine tool, we'll cut across here and carefully go in with an incision and then we'll do a plunge cut up in um, and then we'll come in from this direction. So there'll be three cuts we're going to make there. See how we did. Looking pretty good. So we will need to get some shims back in here. Um, there wasn't any shims or backing, so you will need some shims. I uh, apologize, there was a few tools there that I used in the video, the side cutters um, that you'll probably need in order to cut the nails, and then also you'll need some shims for the door, or for the jam to go in so you can screw it in nice and tight. So with this install here, I had to put in some plywood here i got some plywood it's the exact thickness um, i was going to use some shims but i ended up going with that because when i put this in here it's nice and flush so i'm going to go ahead i'm going to pre-drill a hole here and then two over on this side and i'm going to use this countersink drill bit to do so to countersink the head so i could actually fill them in with epoxy when I'm finished. But I'm gonna go ahead and install this temporarily and the other side so I can get a measurement. I'm gonna put in a new threshold down here because the other one was kind of messed up. So I'm putting a new one in. I'm gonna get a me measurement and then pull these out and proceed to the next step.
see if that's gonna go in. Yes, yeah, sure is. Go ahead and do the other side now. All right, I've got both sides temporarily installed. I took my measurement down here at the bottom all the way across and I'm at 32 inches. So both sides are nice and level and plumb with the jam itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut the new threshold to install it. All right, I got the jam cut. I'm gonna go ahead and unattach my two side pieces there and I'm gonna attach them to the threshold. Let's go ahead and do the other side. So basically, line it up flush with the bottom and the front, and then pre-drill your holes so you're getting three, two to three screws going through your repair kit into this wood right here. And that'll make it nice and strong. So I've got the jam and the repair kit installed. I just did a dry fit and everything fits nice and tight here all the way around. As you can see, I shut the door and the door shuts nice and flush with our, uh, our new threshold. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out now. I'm gonna apply some glue back behind our joints as the instructions are telling us to with the JB weld we're going to mix some of that up and we're going to apply it to the jam and then we're going to reinstall this and screw it down and then fill in all the screw holes using the JB weld it's got the tip here we're going to go ahead and just twist it pull that off it's got a plunger and we're gonna have two solutions coming out the end here. We're gonna do that on this cardboard here. You don't wanna get this stuff on anything. It does dry in five minutes, it says. You got five minutes set time. Um, and then it hardens, uh, I guess, within an hour under 50 degrees. So um, the set time, once again, is five minutes. So we're gonna work pretty quick at getting this on there and getting it installed. Now we're gonna use this little stick they give us and we're gonna mix both solutions around really good. You gotta mix it up. Cause if you don't mix it good, it won't work the way the instructions are telling us. So I'm using white just because 
the jams white and PVC. So I'm gonna go ahead and might be using a little too much here, but we'll get it all in here. Nice and good. On both sides. Alright, I think we're ready here. Let's go ahead and get this to slide in here. Pull back a little bit. Get the holes lined up. So it's all epoxied up. I've got it, uh, I kind of humped it over here. It's about 40 degrees here. Uh, this stuff, it's not setting up within five minutes, but that's what the instructions, it, it told us that it sets up better above 50 degrees. So um, I'm gonna let this sit overnight. I may have to put some more in here to fill in these gaps and then I'll sand it a little bit to where you can't see the seams and then we're gonna go ahead and paint the jam. So um, we're gonna go ahead and let this set and we'll be back at it. All right, so it looks like the glue is nice and dry, the epoxy. Um, there are some high spots here. There is a little bit of a ridge here where the two joints come together. I'm gonna go ahead and sand the wood down and kind of just blend it in a little bit. I'm gonna use a sander here. I'm gonna use 220 grit sandpaper and just lightly sand it. I'm not gonna go too much into the plastic just because it is plastic and it heats up. It might, I'm not quite sure what that's gonna do. So I'm just gonna go ahead and stay on the wood up in this area and just try to smooth the, uh, the joint together. So we're gonna go ahead and proceed with that. Well, the sander works really good on the PVC down in here. Um, I've got this, the two pieces here nice and smooth. There isn't much of a ridge anymore on both sides. Um, however, I may need to touch up in the areas where the screws were. Um, I might put just a little bit more. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to use the JB Weld. I've got this other um, substance I might try to put in there, and I'll go grab that. And show you what that is but before i start sanding this side i got my crosshairs there that i'm going to drill a half inch hole to put the alarm sensor back in the door so i'm going to go ahead and drill that hole now so i don't lose my crosshairs when i sand So it's turning out pretty nice here. Um, this ridge is taken out with the sander. I was really happy to see that the PVC was able to be sanded without it gumming up. There are a couple areas here where the screw holes, you can still see them. I'm gonna use this, um, it's, a, it's called a fill stick. Now, I've already used it on other jobs, but it's made by Rust-Oleum. I got this at Lowe's. Um, you can probably find the same thing. There's another product from, uh, oh, this is Minwax. It's called a blend fill pencil. And this one is also white. But this one here I'm going to use for the PVC. I'm sure this would work as well, but let's go ahead and try it out. Try to fill it in. And I'm just kind of going back and forth, not pressing too hard, but it'll kind of just melt and just go right in there. So when I go to paint, you won't see where these screw heads are. All right. Although it doesn't look the prettiest, but once I start painting it, you'll never even know. So, all right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and proceed with putting the molding 
on the outside of the door there, the exterior door trim, and we'll go ahead and proceed to caulking and then painting. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and caulk all the seams. I got my molding around the outside of the door here. I'm gonna caulk this seam here all the way down. And I'm gonna be using this DAP. Um, it's got a 40 year life. It's called Alex Plus. There it is right there. Um, it will dry within 30 minutes dry time, exterior and interior, um, easy water cleanup. Um, and then I'm going to be painting this with a real high grade paint. So I'll be putting this on and I'm going to do the inside and outside. So everything's been caulked, even down to the threshold so water can't seep in. That's what kind of caused the dry rot the initial dry rot water was getting in down in there they didn't have the uh, the joints weren't closed up with a good sealing of caulking so everything's been caulked both sides and just kind of give you an idea just even the outer molding um, so we made sure that the new molding here was caulked on both sides so water can't get in and here's the left side with the hinge. Got that nice and sanded. Everything's been caulked, even all the way over on this side as well. So it's a nice tight seam. Last step is going to be to finish it with some paint, and then we'll see how everything turns out. So the job's completed. We got our weather stripping in, uh, last coat of paint. And I think it turned out pretty amazing. Um, instead of having to rip all the casing off and taking the door out, um, this route went pretty well. I'm, I, I think I'd do this again um, if I had another door. As long as the dry rot doesn't go over six inches and it's down in this area. If it's up in here, then you're pretty much replacing the whole, the whole jam and door. So anyhow, I hope this video helped you. I'll have a link for all the supplies that I use for this job if you'd like to purchase those. And thank you for watching. You can do it. Stay tuned for the next video.